Howdy, peoples. Uh, this is part two of the Berton Pro running, and this time running on the native front end of the 7300. You know, guys, I'm all about cheap. Uh, do you really need to buy a dongle to run an SDR console or SDR Uno if you have, um, you know, if you'd like to get into the SDR level of control, a true SDR level of control? Uh, for your RX. I'll let you guys be the judge, but I will say no uh, because I'm all about cheap and I'm trying everything I do, I try to save you guys money and give you as many as many options as possible. So this is the RX DAP running with the new Denoiser, Bertom Denoiser Pro, which is $25. It's a paid VST plugin. In my opinion, again, it's worth every penny. Uh, so I don't have a picture of the actual S meter on the radio. However, I'm going to give you an option to basically turn the front end of any transceiver again into a full-blown SDR as, as far as the level of control. All right, so we're going to get right into it. So what you're seeing right here is the Bertom Denoiser Pro. Uh, it is the exact same setup that I used in the previous video with SDR console, which is applicable to uh, anything SDR, like true SDR, whether you're running console, Uno, Apache, Sun, Flex, whatever. All, all that's in a category all by themselves. This is the native front end of the 7300. So what you see in here is that is November 1 Mike Mike running the Spectrum display on the 7300. I find this to be mostly, un eh, it's what I call a bell and a whistle, right? So to get this running, there's a great, there's some information online. Um, what I will tell you is, is the 7300, the baud rate is set to 115,000. And the baud rate set on this, VSPE is set to 115,000 and the driver in Windows is set to 115,000 and OmniRig is set to 115,000. Okay. So also November 1 Mike Mike in here is set to 115,000 and I think it's 115,000 and change. Let me verify that. Uh, what do we got? CIV 115,002. 115.2. Okay, so if you want, if you really want a pan adapter, but you don't want to go with a dongle, you can light up the spectrum display under window right here on November 1 Mike Mike. You can also run a dongle in this display. So I have the HF Plus set up. This is not, you're not seeing the HF Plus. You're seeing actually the raw front end in this spectrum. This is grabbing the IF data. Uh, directly from the 7300. All right, no dongle. This is no RSP or ASPI or anything like that. So, all right. Uh, so what we're going to do, and I'm going to give you the S meter reading on the 7300. I don't have a camera on the 7300, but you're just going to have to trust me. So if I unmute this. Thanks, 73. It's you and Matt. It's not 73. November Zero Whiskey, WRTC Award, your zip. He is an S3, an S3 uh, on the front end. Uh, Bravo Whiskey Norway, five and nine. Okay, so that that's an S3 signal, right? Now you're thinking, well, I can hear a little bit of noise in there. Yes, you will. I do not have the reefer subtract plugin running. Like I said before, Sometimes on weak signals, you're better off not running the subtract plugin because it's just, it's too much, it's too much of a handful, right? So this system is driven with the RF gain on the 7300 and on strong signals, you want to pull that RF gain back, crush that thing. Um, and it doesn't matter what, what rig you're running, running this on, uh, RF gain is your friend. I also have the noise reduction on set to, do I have noise reduction on? I have it set to four on the 7300. 
You don't want too much because it strips too much high end off. It's basically a low pass filter. Um, but it helps uh, with the hash and trash uh, flowing into this. And of course, that would be applicable on any transceiver. So try it with the noise reduction on or off. One thing I want to point out with the Spurtom Pro, Denoiser Pro, you want to set this up so that you'll see right here, and I went through this in the previous video, whatever bandwidth you're running. So let's say you're, run, you're working a lot of DX and your bandwidth is set to 2.8 uh, kilohertz, which my the radio, my radio is actually set to... Okay, I just switched the filter width to 2.8 kilohertz. So you don't want to run any wider on the transceiver than you need to be. If somebody's transmitting at 2.8 kilohertz and you're working a lot of DX, there's no reason to run that beyond 3 kilohertz. So when you come to this plugin, you want to set your frequencies here from low to high. Uh, you want this set uh, where you can pull this down to like 2.8 kilohertz. So basically when someone's talking, if you don't see this green LED fluctuating, that means you're set too high. You're set out of the range of the plugin to be able to reduce the noise, okay? Or actually work well on the signal, All right? So you wanna do that first. And I'm gonna have this, uh, uh, the CWP is already on the website. You're going to have to go through and configure it. Uh, one thing you're going to want to do is you want to create a series of VST presets, okay? And you can do that by clicking this little down arrow next to VST3. And you can do this for any of the VSTs. But for this one specifically, this is important. And... So you want to create a VST, let's say if you're working DX, uh, set it up and save that preset, name it so you can identify it. If you're working, let's say you're listening to somebody, uh, some guys running wide, let's say 3.6, like the icon will go out to 3.6. Uh, set up a 3.6, which means you're going to have to adjust the frequencies here. The 3.6, save the preset, uh, set your curve until you feel it sounds good and you're off and running, okay? And that way you'll be able to recall them at a click of a mouse. It's it's like an infinitely variable DSP um, that's custom AM, no problem. I was running it on AM earlier. Superb. So let's say uh, you guys you guys are transmitting on like 8K AM, 10K, 12K. Set this up accordingly in here and save the preset. Name it something like AM, uh, DAP, whatever. Okay? That explains that. So I'm going to, I'm going to toggle it and then I'm going to work with it a little bit. Let me get the cans on. And then you can see exactly what it's capable of doing. Now, uh, another quick note, um, if you put your mouse over these up and down arrows right here and you drag up and down, this will adjust the noise reduction. Hang on, guys. Okay, sorry about that, guys. Wife came in. Um, all right, where was I? So uh, these are basically high and low pass filters. 
So play with these as well. Don't use a low pass filter because it's going to strip a ton of low end off. But if you want, I, I always run the high pass filter on this plugin uh, because it will strip any general noise of outside of the pass band above where you're listening. It will strip that off. This also has an auto button right here, uh, which is very cool. I'll show you what that does. Uh, really neat. So let me unmute it and we're going to work with it and pay attention to what I'm doing in here. And I'm going to toggle. I'm going to bypass the Denoiser Pro. Reefer Subtract is not running, but I will bring that in at some point just to show you. It's it's a great plug-in to add to it, uh, but it it's heavy in artifacts if the signal is very weak. All right, so here we go. Kilo Papa for America Foxtrot 5 and 9. Thank you, and 73. He is an S0. S0. Okay, we're located in Minnesota. Thanks for the call. Toggling. Denoiser. That's off. CQ, CQ, November 0 whiskey. On. CQ, CQ, November 0 whiskey. W4 Echo Whiskey, November 5 and 9. Auto going on. Thanks for the call. 73 from Minnesota. Uh, this is WRTC Award Station, November 0 Whiskey, Georgia. He, he is an S0. Denoiser off. N3 ZIO, 5 and 9. November 3 Zulu, India, Oscar, 5 and 9. Denoiser on. I'm going to try and bring the November zero whiskey. Reefer subtract coming in. November You're the artifacting. November Signal that week. See what I mean? It's not worth running it. Here are, you can hear the artifacting. It's okay. Subtract plugin going out. Whiskey, whiskey. Papa, Papa, one whiskey, whiskey, five and nine. Okay, 73, Obrigado. Papa, Yankee, two radio echo, five and nine. He's an S0. Not even registering on the S meter. Kilo Mike 4, India, Alpha Julia, 5 and 9. You wouldn't think so looking at the spectrum. November 0, Whiskey. November 0, Whiskey. Bypass. Oh, wrong one. I need your full call. Delta 2, Yankee Golf Uniform, you're 5 and 9, over. You notice the complete lack of artifacting. No artifacts. That's what I like about this. I don't mind a little okay, white note. Thank no you, uh, 73, from Minnesota. November 0 Whiskey, WRTC Award, Georgia. November 0 Whiskey, November 0 Whiskey. This is Kilo. Let's go up to see if we can find a stronger signal here. CQ Poda, CQ Poda, this is Kilo Yankee 4 Bravo X ray calling CQ. Parks on there listening. He's a 5 7. That's a 5 7 signal. Again, auto is turned on. This on is the... Kilo Yankee 4 Bravo X ray. Parks on the air, QRZ. Okay, going into bypass. This 
This is Kilo Yankee 4, Bravo X-Ray. Pokes on the air, 2RZ. Bypass. CQ Pota, CQ Pota. This is Kilo Yankee 4, Bravo X-Ray. Calling CQ, Parks on the air, listening. Okay, this is the reefer subtract going in. I'll kick it in uh, when he comes back. CQ Pota, CQ Pota. This is Kilo on. Yankee 4, Bravo X-Ray. Calling CQ, Parks on the air, listening. Okay, so he's about an S7. This is Kilo Yankee 4, Bravo X-Ray. Parks on the air, QRZ. See what I'm saying? It's almost not even worth running the reefer subtract plug-in. It's problematic when you're this dealing with weak Kilo signals. This is Yankee 4, Bravo X-Ray. Parks on the air, QRZ. Yep, he's an S6, S7. So uh, there you go, folks. Quick demonstration Thank on the... Pota. On the native front end of the ICOM 7300. Uh, quite stark difference, right? Pretty terrifying. Anyways, we'll catch you all later. Uh, have a great day. Uh, thanks for uh, checking in. Giving you options, folks. It's, uh, <laughs> do you really need to spend $3,000 on an SDR? Hell no. Absolutely not. Uh, this is cheap. Uh, 25 bucks and a little Sabrin card, and you're off and running. Eight, uh, total cost, uh, what is Sabrin's are eight bucks. I, do, I am running this on a Sabrin, so I come out of the USB audio codec from the 7300, uh, pukes up into a Sabrin, and I patch the Sabrin via analog patch cord to an additional card. You can also patch it to a line in on the computer, set the DAW to pick up the line in on the input. And there you go, spit it out your real tech speakers, or you can do it more elaborate the way I do it, which uh, is, I don't know if it's, I don't think it would be any snappier, uh, but it's very, very clean. Anyways, we'll see you guys later. 7-3.